In our previous tutorial, we configured the second level cache of Hibernate for our uh, user details entity class. So the steps that we followed were uh, first in our hibernate.cfg.xml, we enabled the second level cache. Uh, over here. So we added a property said use second level cache. We made it as true and we also supplied the cache provider class as the eh cache provider. We added the eh cache jar into our class path and then in our uh, actual entity we made this entity as cacheable because by default entities are not cached unless you specifically ask Hibernate to do so. Uh, once we did those two steps, we were we were all set to use a second level cache. You know, the cache is being used by default. We don't have to specifically write any commands in order to use the cache. Hibernate automatically takes care of that for us. So, if same you know object is accessed across two different sessions, the second level cache comes into play and it's going to you know uh, give us the data from the cache. Now this is fine, but now let's say I uh, instead of using a session dot get what I'm doing is I'm pulling up data using a query. So let's say I have a session dot create query and uh, okay, let me, let me remove this and um, I will use a query object in order to get the same data. Now what I'll do is I'll do a query equals session dot create query and I will write the query here from user details user there user dot and let's verify the ID again it's user ID user ID equals one. I'm not going to do any parameter substitution because I want to keep this example simple. Now query is something I'll have to import from Java X persistence. I'm sorry, from um, Hibernate. So let me remove that. Okay, org.hibernate, I'm importing this. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to do a query dot list and it's going to give me the list of records. It's, here is just one uh, record. But it's going to give me a list. List equals query dot list. I'll have to import the query. I'm in mean the list again from java.util. Okay, so this is exactly the same as what we've done earlier. Instead of using a session dot get, what I'm doing is a session dot create query. Now I will use the same thing in this new session. So what I'm doing is after uh, after getting the list of users, I'm closing this session, I'm opening a new session, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I will say I'll call this query two. And uh, I will use the same list, that's fine. Let's say query two dot list. Okay, now how many queries will run? Let's uh, check this. Session is closed. Yeah, that's because I'm using the old one. The session two. Okay, so there you can see it's running two select queries. The first one is for uh, the first session and the second one is for the second session. Now why is this so? Because uh, we have already specified the, the cache, right, over here. Here you can see we already have the eh cache in place. Now, the thing is that Hibernate differentiates queries as something different. We need to specify a query cache separately. I'll talk in a minute about why we need to do that. But uh, see, just like we have a use second level cache, 
we need to have another property called use query cache and we need to set that to true as well. Query cache, we set this to true. Okay, so now what, what we're doing is we have a second level cache and we have a query cache. Now the query cache is actually different from your second level cache. The results of the query is not stored in the same place in the cache as it would store the results of a session.get which it has uh, cached in the second level cache. So actually you can think of this as three separate caches in Hibernate. The first cache is the session cache which you know which is uh, which comes up by default everything inside a session is cached the second cache is your uh, second level cache and the third cache is your query cache so in order to use query cache first thing is we need to uh, we need to enable this say use query cache this is already there we have already provided the cache provider so we don't need to do that again if you were not using a second level cache you were using just the query cache you wouldn't have to do this this line is not required, but these two are required because we are enabling the, the query cache and we are also specifying what's the provider. Okay, now when we enable the second level cache, what we also did was we went to the entity and we said, hey, make this entity cacheable. Okay, the same way for a query, we need to tell Hibernate, hey, make this query cacheable. Not all queries are cached by default, just like not all entities are cached by default in the second level cache. So in order to make a query cacheable what we need to do is here after our session dot create query we need to say query dot set cacheable now the say query dot set cacheable is a boolean takes a value of true or false I'm gonna mark this as true so what I'm doing is I'm telling hibernate that execute this query but when you execute the query, make it as cacheable. I have the query cache enabled over here. So put this results into that query cache so that I can access it subsequently. Now, if I run this, you can see that it is still resulting in two selects, even though I have set this cacheable as true. So let me do one thing. I'll go to this uh, query two and I will set this query two to cacheable as well. So I'll say query two dot set cacheable. I'll mark it as true. Save. Now let's see how many queries, select queries get executed. There you see there's only one select query. So the point to note here is that set cacheable not only caches the query results, it also tells the query to look at the second level cache and see if it's already there. Now this set cacheable actually cached the results of this query. But since we had not marked the cacheable of this query, it actually went to the database even though it was already available in the second level cache now so if i set the set cacheable over here what this set cacheable is doing is it's telling the query to look up the query cache and not hit the database directly so so the you know the set cacheable is performing two roles the first thing is if the query cache is not already having the values go to the database pull up the records and set the query cache and the query cache is already having the values pull up the data from the query cache. So this is a way we can actually cache the results of queries. Uh, just a note to add here, uh, we need to use query cache a bit carefully because uh, first of all, we might end up with a whole lot of data in a query. This is different from uh, a session.get. Uh, of course, you can have associations and still end up in a whole lot of data in a session.get, but in a query, it is very easy to make the whole system inefficient just by caching something which is not really required to be cached or uh, resulting in a situation where the cache is getting updated very often because uh, you're caching something that's updated often. So we need to use this with care, but uh, this is how you would use it if you wanted to.